Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 903. And the topic today is about, um, I don't know what the dating term is. It's not like ghosting or something, but what happens when your date's online personality or persona doesn't match in real life? I've got a few things to talk about on that. Before I jump, before I don't deliver all that content, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why you might want to follow my talks. Um, my name is Barry Selby. Hi, nice to meet you. I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and a um, best-selling author of the book, 50 Ways, I should say an author of the best-selling book, I was trying to suppose that, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. If you're single and you want to get some better relationships, it's a good book. If you're in a relationship, it makes it better, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which informs my work with them and also inspired these talks just about three years ago. It's almost three years. I'm waiting for that reminder from Facebook that it's three years ago they did my first one. Um, and this is um, the top, the type, the up, excuse me, messages for the masculine started almost three years ago. Today, we're episode number nine had been three. Let me complete that loop. And the topic today is about um, fake profiles simply put, or I should say um, padded profiles, maybe more accurate, <laughs> which gives me an idea. Um, for the older crowd, let's go back in history a bit, shall we? Um, back in the day when we were, when we were a lot younger, and I'm, I guess I kept myself as part of the older crowd, I am actually a, a, I'm actually a boomer, not a millennial, um, which might be kind of obvious, I guess. But back in the day, there was a certain padding we would do um, as boys and girls to make ourselves more attractive to our future mu future partners. Um, hi, Mary. Um, your screen is frozen. I hope it's, I hope it's not. I don't think it's me. Mine's going fine on mine, apparently, so it may be yours. Yes. Um, so there was a certain... I'm going to say falsehood is not the right word, but a certain sense of misrepresentation, I'll put it that way, in a polite sort of way. Now we're in the dating app world and through, we've gone through dating sites and all sorts of stuff like that. But the dating apps in particular, and as frankly, as social media also has this appearance, a lot of people on their online presence don't reflect their transparency of who they are in real life. In fact, they, I'm glad. Thank you, Mary. I'm glad it's, got, glad it's working now. Um, it seems in a lot of ways for people nowadays to have an online presence, whether it's social media or a dating app for that matter, because I might go into the social media platform more, especially since the dating, since social media, excuse me, Facebook in particular, has a dating feature now, although I haven't seen it yet. My friends have been seeing it and had some less than stellar experiences so far, it's just so far what I've heard. So the challenge of dating nowadays is you have to rely upon what you see in the dating app. And most dating apps have maybe 20 words of copy and three pictures, maybe one. And 90% of the time, those pictures are not usually close up to see who the person is. So there's a lot of padding in there. Now, I'm going to give you some feedback that might help you when you're doing your own dating profiles. But I also want to make sure you, give you some perspective on what you might want to do if the person you're dating or the person you go on a date with doesn't match what they did online, besides running away. Um, because there's a certain thing that happens in this place. Usually there's two, I mean, let me think, I'm, I'm seeing two right now, there may be more, but let me start with two ways of being I'm very aware of, that people tend to fake their profile online before you meet them in person. One is they're trying to convince you of something they're not, or two, which is more often the case in certain places, they're afraid that you'll see who they really are. And so they upsell themselves or they up-level up their presentation to be more um, attractive, I guess is the word, but it's like it's like polishing. <laughs> I was going to say polishing a car, and I had a whole other thought pop in. There's a no, I'm not going to use that. That that's a bit crude, but let me just say that some people polish mud <laughs> and hope it shines, making you think it's more than it really is. So here's the thing. Or here's a thing about that. First of all. If they're trying to convince you that there's something they're not, that when you meet them in person, you realize that's the tr that the truth of them isn't what they had put online, you definitely want to walk away. Because this person is caught up in a sense of lying and bravado and ego that won't let them be real with you. Pure and simple. Done, clear, walk away. If, however, the person is 
adjusting, for one of whatever word, their profile, profile to look better than it is because they're afraid you see them as they really are, that might be a doorway into who they are. I mean, sure, there is a doorway into who they are, and you can then decide accordingly because you might discover when you meet this person, they're actually a lot better than they think they are. Not who you think they are, but who they think they are. And you start to discover that what you, what they, what you put online was maybe too plasticky, but who they are in real life, you like a lot more. So there's two different ways of looking at that as right off the bat. There may be more, I haven't seen any yet, but two that show up right now, which is very clear. One's a deal breaker, one's a let's check it out further. So if you're um, polishing your profile to be better than you really are, my question to you is why? Which one of those two is it? It may be a third or fourth reason, but certainly it may be one of those two primary reasons of why you might be um, creating a profile that doesn't show you as you really are. Now, let me try to, to social media right now. One of the things interesting, and one of the one of the, and I and I'm on a few apps myself, just to be clear, and I do my best to be transparent. But one of the apps I'm on, when I'm looking at profiles, includes an Instagram feed of that person as well. Which is kind of nice because you get to see more of a look into their person's life. Now, of course, Instagram is no proof it's going to be perfect. But the thing about it is, is when you have social media tending to be more about people's real life because it's not just their own curated posts. It's a lot of times people posting stuff with them in it, pictures, see what they're about, and you get to discover who they are. So in that dating app, for me personally, it's interesting to peruse because I get to see somebody's more authentic expression. And having that understanding that there's more... Um, oh, sorry, I just saw two different forks, a fork in the road on that one. So one fork is it's fun to discover more about somebody to get to know them. That's always a good thing. But secondly, the other side is to discover that this person is not who they are can be very unsettling. Now, on the extreme cases I mentioned earlier, where they actually try to pre present something to you that's not real and keep trying to put bravado on and convincing you, like a narcissist, for example, or so even a sociopath, well, more narcissist than sociopath, because a narcissist is more invested in getting a certain result. Sociopath's not. The understanding is that that or the, the recognition is that they are looking to control you. So if you're noticing they're trying to convince you of stuff that you can see is not true, as I said earlier, a good time to walk away. That's the other side. With somebody who basically maybe doesn't represent themselves authentically because they may be afraid of being seen authentically, you have a different, different deck of playing cards, so to speak. You've been dealt with a different hand, you can play with it differently. But I want to ask you the question for you to consider for yourself, how do you present yourself to the world? Both as a profile creator for your own dating and how you experience other people's profiles when you date them as well. I've had just a couple of personal experiences. I did click yes on a couple of different profiles over the over over the years, over the last couple of years, where I really got a clear message, like a, a massive intuition that the person who was taught, I was reaching out to for the messenger wasn't the person of the profile. Like they put a fake profile up. Yes, ladies put up fake profiles as well as men do. So one thing is, at all times, trust your gut. It's the most accurate bullshit detector I know of. It's worked for me so many times in many situations, including business dealings and romantic dealings too. So understand that you can be willing to trust that level of your own inspiration before you go on dates. The other part is that if you really want to have an authentic, connected, amazing, real, truth, honest relationship, then you've got to do that in your own profile. Yes, you've got to be that transparent, honest, real, authentic. I know there's certain etiquette about dating profiles, by the way. A friend of mine talks about this. In his, there's a friend of mine who does dating profile like makeovers. And, it, and, and recommendation is always having, um, yes, my research. Well, science research has been hard earned. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, yes, and trusting your intuition is absolutely key. That... Um, a friend of mine said, and I agree with him on the, I forget, I forget, I agree with them, actually, I can't remember if it was a man or woman I was talking to. They said about dating profiles when you're putting a your profile together. Yes, be honest in what you're saying. Don't just put, don't just put the same old bravado, like, you know, long walks on the beach and, 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 and cocktails by the sunset, whatever the standard thing is nowadays. Add to that something personal that's real about you. Maybe you have a cause that you support. Maybe you have an issue you're working out. Be honest with that. There's actually another dating site I'm on, here's someone a few, that has a chance for people to expose their fears and their goals in the profile, which is an interesting place to look. So that's another thing you could look at. The other part though is your pictures. I have seen so many profiles of women, because I do 
check those out on dating, dating apps, where the pictures are either all, all in sunglasses, bad move, um, 300, 300 yards away from them on a, on a, on a ledge or on a, on a beach, so you can see a silhouette basically, you can't see who they are, or a close or a camera angle where it's like right below their nose or it's up above the head. And it's like, can we see people for who they really are? So in your profile, my suggestion, the encouragement, recommendation is you can have all those pictures too, but as long as you have at least one of each of a headshot like this, this, this framing, like upper body, like head straight on without, without sunglasses, so they can see who you look like. Um, Cause I have pictures on my profile where I have hats on and I don't have hats on because some people want to see what I look like with, with them and out. Cause that's who I am. So having that ability to dress up and look okay on camera means also being relaxed on camera and be authentic on camera. And, and also having a full, a full length body shot, a picture of you a whole length can be very clear and effective in communication as well. But do it where you're not like so far away from the camera, you look like a stick figure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where you have to be seen. So those two things are recommended in your profile. If you're doing pictures in your profile, you're updating your profile or doing something like that in your dating profile. Now, back to back to, to social media again for a second. I mentioned that in one of the dating apps I'm on, there is a, um, an opportunity for people to post their Instagram profiles along the bottom as well. That's very helpful and very useful. Um, but it also means that some people, because of that, are extremely protective of the social, social media. So that brings me back to the point about trusting your gut, your instincts, your intuition, as, as you said, Mary. It's understanding that when you're on dating apps or on social media, what somebody presents on the dating, actually, hmm, should they flash on something? On social media, a lot of people promote their business like it's the most successful thing on the planet. And 90% of them, 95% of them, are struggling like the rest of us. And I'm, I'm not perfect on this myself, just to be transparent. Um, as much as I've done all these data, these, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Videos, that's the word. <laughs> Facebook lives all these the last three years. My business certainly has room, lot of room to grow. I'm not, a, I'm not a, the best, the best paid coach in the business just to be, you know, that's just authentic, but I do have a passion to teach my, teach my work and share my message, which is what I do in all my, all my, um, what's the word? Posts. That's the one I'm looking for posts. These words are slipping away for some reason. But some people promote themselves on Facebook as being so together, so perfect, and so real, you can almost tell that they're not. Same thing's true in dating apps. So I'm just like saying as a, um, not a cautionary tale as much as a word to the wise, is when you are looking to meet somebody in real life, you met through online, whether it's social media or a dating app, really trust your instincts. Trust your gut. Know what it is you're looking for and know what you're looking with. Which means, again, if you want to look for that in your dating and experience, your social media experience, be that transparent in your own posts, your own profiles, your own dating um, display, so to speak. It's a really interesting place we're playing in right now. The modern dating scene has changed so much since smartphones came out because basically, you know, what, 2007, the iPhone came out. So dating apps didn't start for a few years after that. So we've only been in this, this strange dating arena five years, six years. It's amazing how much we've moved in the last five, six years. Back in the old days, and this one thing I talked about before in other talks of mine about courtship, the courtship was a much more, well, a better thing, although back to then was Match.com back in the day and, and then Great Expectations before that. But the thing is, one thing Great Expectations had back in the day, and Great Expectations, great expectations was one of the one of the big dating services back in the 70s, 80s, somewhere around there. So it's been there for a long time. But the one thing they did right, which we haven't done much since, is that people who were clients in that service would have a video interview, VHS tape back in the old days. And so when you're going to look at somebody you want to meet, you wouldn't just see pictures and profiles, you'd see a video of them talking to the camera, which is extremely elevating in the communication. It's like saying about how, you know, a picture tells, if a picture takes a thousand words, a video does 10,000 or 20,000 or 100,000 words. So having video in some dating apps now, which is happening more and more, that's a great thing too, because it shows you more re in more real, more, more um, three-dimensional, more three-dimensional, which is good. So anyway, I'm posting a lot of things out here to say this. Bottom line I want to say on this is that there are a lot of people out there who put a different profile up to what they look like in real life. The persona they have online is not the persona they bring in, into reality. So 
I won't say be prepared to be disappointed, but be okay to know that sometimes you're gonna meet people who don't match who they really are and be willing to walk away. That is really the biggest part of this is that sometimes you put all your wishes into a basket because what they look like online is so perfect and amazing. Like that's the perfect person I wanna be with. You meet them in real life and you get disappointed and you think, well, I'm gonna make the best of it anyway. Maybe not. Maybe it's a good time to walk away at that point to free yourself for the next opportunity. Dating is not like, you know, the, there's the extremes of dating where it's like you go one extreme, you're gonna go, I just wanna meet somebody because I want someone, I wanna have a warm body next to me. And it's, um, and it's, the other extreme is like, I'm gonna hold it for my soulmate, and nobody else before that. So it's finding your own place along that spectrum. So was it, Mary? It's like two, keeping two sets of account books. Was that something in the news today um, you might be thinking of? I'm not saying anything about that, um, staying not being political. Um, but yes, in a way it is. It's about keeping, it is almost keeping two uh, appearances, presentations, identifications, as it were, one online, one in person. That's one reason I do my Facebook Lives because they're real raw on who I am. When people meet me in real life, they know who I am because they watch my videos. So that's another point about being more visible, accessible, and authentic. And I'm all about being authentic. I think that's about it. I think I've flogged this one enough to give you some thoughts about this. If this is making sense to you, great. If you have any questions, comments, please put them below afterwards when I sign off. Um, I do try to keep this talk still under 20 minutes usually, or sometimes they go longer. Um, I will put some links in the comments because of what's going on right now. It takes so much effort and causes so much anxiety to present a false image. Well, yes, Mary, for people like us, but there are people out there who are very skilled at presenting a false image that's not hard to do so that's what I'm saying be cautious be aware and be authentic as well so just to be clear so some links will be in the comments um, ladies I'm going to put my attract the man you want program in the comments because if you want to get clear about what you want in a relationship that's my course that I recommend my signature program it's an online eight-week program with coaching if you want it or not that's gonna be in the, in the comments um, also put in the comments um, a discovery session with me because you may want to talk about this. If this is something that's challenging you and you have problems with the dating arena, I can help you with that. So I'll put a link in the comments for that as well. Um, my Thriving Through the Holidays program is supposed to start tomorrow. We'll see if it happens or not. I'm waiting for a few more people to join in. If you want to join in that, I'll put a link in the comments so you can check it out. If you want to sign up for that, you can. It's supposed to start tomorrow, but if not, I may have to postpone it through the beginning of next week um, because it is right before Thanksgiving and because a lot of people want the help. So that'll be in the comments as well. Um, And as a reminder, I put my self-love meditation in there because that's also part of my program. So I'll put that in the, in the in comments as well. So four things in the comments to look out for. Attract the man you want, discover session with me, thriving through the holidays, self-love meditation. So I'll give you something to play with. Treat yourself, one of those that will work for you. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live. I do every day at 5 p.m. Civic time right here on my personal page, which is facebook.com slash you slash Barry Selby. You can watch me there every day at 5 p.m. Civic time. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, the replays go to my business page and onto YouTube. If you want to watch them on my personal, my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, you can like my page and you watch them there, although not every single one of them shows up there, the way, way Facebook likes to work, mainly because I've got too many of them, I guess, for them. But I do have them all saved onto YouTube. If you go to my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby, so it's youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can um, subscribe to my channel on there as a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. You can watch all my broadcasts there. You can scan through, find keywords, and get some support. My talks are all, fr all free. I all will provide insight, inspiration, and sometimes um, provocation. And uh, as always, this is something I put out to support you and have you more love and light, more love and joy in your life. If you want to get some help, reach out to me. Again, the links will be in the comments when I sign off. And uh, this is an interesting topic to play with. So there are so many dating um, terms out there now. I don't want to drop any on this one, but I was tempted to, but I decided not to. But I thank you for watching this one. I appreciate you being with me as always. I'll be back in tomorrow with a different topic, most likely, different broadcast, and uh, that's about it. I thank you for watching, and as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.